Hello, ladies and gents! You are probably rather tired by now of all these best of 2016 compilations, but I think this one might be still of interest. So, today we are going to have a look at the top 3 tanks tier 5 to tier 10 within each class based on the average win percentage and the average net income, aka the actual profitability per game. Now, I prepare this compilation separately for premium tanks and regular tanks as well, and I'm pretty sure that you will be just as surprised about some of the results out there as I was. The data is purely based on the tank statistics over on VB Addict, which is a brilliant website and I highly recommend everyone to check it out, link to it is in the description below. Now they calculate these numbers based on the last 30 days of data, without taking premium accounts or any additional bonuses into account. So this should give us a really nice picture of where we actually finished at the end of 2016 and how did we start the new year. I have to say that I did also exclude a couple of tanks from the list. Clan Wars Reward Tanks and the top 2 Mission Reward Tanks, the T-55A and the Object 260, as these are typically owned by only a few, mostly very good players, which influences their placement a lot. As expected, pretty much all of them would have placed really well, if you are curious about that. But let's not waste any more time, let's get started. So, I grouped this video by 10 class from light tanks to tank destroyers, separating them into premium and regular top lists. If you are only interested in a certain vehicle type, I also put some timestamps in the description below. And with that said, let's see first which are the best light tanks in the game right now. Kicking it off with the regular light tanks by average win percentage, I'm guessing a lot of you were expecting the M41 Bulldog in the top 3? Not gonna happen, I'm afraid. What we have, however, is a surprising dominance in terms of Chinese light tanks, with the WZ-132 finishing on top and its little sister the 131 finishing in third place as well, still with an over 50% average win result. By the way, if you are looking for some awesome Chinese light tank gameplay, I actually just featured the WZ-132 replay yesterday, scoring the most kills ever for this light tank. I put a link to it in the description below, it's really a recommended watch. Now in second place in this Chinese sandwich is the trusty T-54 lightweight, which is kinda expected really, the tank being very highly regarded for a long time now. Still staying with the regular light tanks, if you were wondering which ones make the most credit, well, here you go. Typically in this category you will see mostly tier 5 and tier 6 tanks, which makes the fact that on top of the light tanks we actually have a tier 7 autoloader, the T-71, even more exciting. I'm guessing this is because this little beast can rack up quite a bit of damage with its fast reload. On a side note by the way, all these credit numbers are with standard accounts and they are also net, so that's actually the amount that you have left after the repairs and restocking your machine. In second place in this compilation is another surprise for me in form of the VK2801, especially as I personally had to fire a lot of heat in this thing if I wanted to get a good result in the higher tier matches, but then again, maybe it's just me. In third place then we have the fan favorite ESE MX, a beast of a machine at tier 5 and one of the most fun things in the game to zoom around on the battlefield. Moving over to the premium light tanks, I have to say the choice from tier 5 and up is rather limited, so there won't be any huge surprises here. By win chance we have the tier 6 type 64 on top, which is a machine I'm actually really looking forward to getting on my EU account as well. This thing is followed by the AMX 1375 Grand Finals Edition, and finally in third place a rarity in form of the type 62. Moving over to the credit side, as expected, the only tier 8 premium light tank, the Black Dog, is on top by credits earned by a long shot, followed by the Type 62, with the Type 64 being in third place. And if you are wondering what happened to the AMX, that little thing fires quite a bit of premium with most players, which in return kinda kills its money making potential, really, at least compared to its competition. Switching now over to the medium tanks, among the regular selection you will find a rather significant chat dominance. In the first place is the tier 9 Skoda T50 with a whopping 54% average wins, and in the third place we have its big brother at tier 10 also with a very respectable close to 53% average wins. 
Now interestingly enough, in the second spot we have actually one of the new Swedish mediums, the tier 7 Leo, which seems to perform rather impressively as well. Now it would be absolutely great to know which gun actually the majority used for this machine, but I'm going to take a wild guess here that it's probably this smaller caliber rapid firing gun. Now in terms of profitability, we will of course have to drop down a few tiers to find the winners, and again, the results did actually surprise me a little bit. Just to remind you, the credit values are with standard accounts and after resupplying. So, in first place is a mid-tier derp favorite, the Panzer 4H, and again I thought that the liberal heat usage will cut more into the profits on this machine, but apparently you can get a reasonable result with HE as well. In second place there is again another Swedish tank, the Tier 5 M42, followed by, again, another Czech tank, the also Tier 5 Skoda T24. Now moving over to the premium side of things, the mid-tiers rule everything, including the win percentage, with actually a very rare machine up there with a whopping 58.6% average wins, the Panzer 5 slash 4. Now this thing was recently buffed out of the blue, raising its performance significantly and catapulting it to the top of the charts, but you don't have to worry about it too much, as it's a very rare sight on the battlefield. What you will encounter a lot more often are the two mediums from the Berlin Trio, the T-3485 Rudy in second place and the trusty Cromwell B in third place, both of them still with an absolutely crazy 54% plus average wins. If you are looking for some mid-tier fun times while training your crews, these things are as good as it gets. If you want to earn a ton of credits though, tier 8 is the way to go, and look at who's in the first place, by a significant margin actually. So, did you think it would be the M4A1 Ravioli? I know I didn't, and this certainly makes me even more interested in this machine, especially considering its huge alpha damage. Now if you like more the standard medium tank gameplay, the Panzer 58 Mutz is the next best thing that you can do, with an also very strong average profit result, followed by another rarity, the famous Hype 59. And while Hype is pretty much all that's going for this machine in these days, at least it still earns a decent amount of credits. Continuing with the heavy tanks on the irregular tech trees, it's a total Swedish autoloader dominance out there right now, with the tier 8, 9 and tier 10 Swedish heavies occupying all of the top spots by win percentage. Now before you rush to the forums complaining about how overpowered these things are, it has to be said that as we are so early after their release, they are mostly played by the best and most experienced players out there at the moment, with majority of the population trying to figure out their weaknesses. These win percentages will go down significantly in time, but it says a lot that even the third place machine, the Kramwagen, has almost 56% average wins at the moment, at tier 10. Do they make a ton of credits though? Of course they don't. For that, again we will have to go back to the mid-tiers. Now the result surprised me a little bit again, though it probably really shouldn't have. These are all very powerful machines capable to do a lot of damage, and these things do not require you to fire a ton of premium shells to be competitive, so the results overall make a lot of sense. So first spot, OI Experimental, second spot is the BDR G1B with a very nice 90mm gun, and then on third spot is back to the Japanese with the OI, the Japanese brute of a tank. Japanese heavies for the win. Moving over again to the premium side of things, who here expected to see the Patriot on the top? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint, though it isn't that far behind actually. It's rather interesting to see the performance differences between the Liberté and the Patriot compared to each other, and I will definitely get back to that in a little bit more detail in a second. So, first things first, in the top spot we have a really dirty machine, the KV-222, a tier 5 seal clubber that basically feasts on the inexperienced players that do not know that they should really exceptionally shoot the turret on this machine. 61.73% average wins on this thing, just no comment. Now in second place there is another rarity, the former tier 5 American premium heavy tank, the T-14. Now this thing was removed from sale quite a long time ago, but it still posts rather impressive wins for its tier. 
And finally in third place we have one of the newcomers, the AMX M449. Now a couple of things here, first of all the M449 and the M449 Liberté, the one that has actually the French paint job are two separate machines in terms of statistics, even if they really only differ by their skin. The same goes by the way also for the T26E5 and the T26E5 Patriot as well. Now in this case I couldn't really find a good quality PNG file for the M449 with the regular skin and that's why I'm using the Liberté's picture, so sorry for this little confusion. Be as it may, you might be wondering why this thing is actually outperforming the Patriot in terms of the average win percentage. Well, I'm guessing this is because this thing is easier to use correctly. Put the front towards the enemy, done. So it will, on average, perform better with all the players that own it, while the Patriot has a higher skill cap so the better players will be able to pull off crazy things in it, even if the average is slightly less for that machine. It has to be said though, not by much. So which T8 premium heavy tanks make the most credits? Perhaps surprisingly the winner is actually the FCM50T with over 22,600 credits profit per game on a standard account, though it has to be said that the results actually with the premium heavies were really close to each other, most of them doing very well actually. Now in second place we have the good old T-34 that remains one of the best credit earners out there, even if the abysmal gun handling completely destroys these things for me. And then in third place we have the other new kid on the block, the T-26E5 Patriot. So quite interesting then, the Liberté has a slight advantage in terms of win chance, while the Patriot has a slight advantage in terms of credit earning potential, probably because of its faster rate of fire as well. Ooh, that's a lot of tanks to go through, but we are nearing the end now so don't give up just yet. Continuing with the tank destroyers, among the regular ones we see again a massive Swedish dominance in terms of average win percentage, although not even they could overcome the tier 5 beast, that's the AT2. The British roadblock laughs at your fancy suspension. On a side note though, the same thing applies here as with the Swedish heavy tanks. These machines right now are typically played by the best and most experienced players, so their win rates will go down in time. Now as for the profitability, again the top spot for the Flat Panzer, aka the Jagdpanzer 4 is a bit of a surprise to me. Now as far as I remember, you have to fire quite a bit of premium rounds in this thing at the higher tiers if you want to stay relevant, although it's also true that this machine is an absolute monster with the regular AP rounds when it's top tier. In second place we have the rather sneaky German tank destroyer the Nashorn, followed by another powerful mid-tier tank destroyer, the Stuck 3G. As for the premium tank destroyers, it's a prize time once again. No, it's actually not the Scorpion G or the E25 posting the most crazy win percentages, though naturally both of them had really good scores. On the top it's actually the second mission reward vehicle at the moment, the T28 concept, which is a bit crazy considering how inflexible this thing really is with massive weak spots, although it has to be said that it really can be extremely effective in punishing the less experienced crowd. Now second by win percentage is another rarity, the SU-85-1. Considering that it's widely regarded as an overpowered little beast, I personally expected a little bit better results to be honest, although an average of above 53% wins is still a respectable one. And finally in third spot we have the ISU-122S. Now if we look at the profitability of the premiums, the winner is to no surprise the Rheinmetall Scorpion G, which is one of the best credit earners in the game right now. I think this is also because it's rather forgiving with its massive penetration, just as long as you can remain undetected. Now in second place it's a bit of a surprise in form of the Jagdtiger 88 with its rapid firing 88mm gun and monstrous armor if it's cooled down. And finally in the third spot there is actually a complete surprise, a tier 6 tank destroyer, the box tank. Now this placement tells us a couple of things. First of all that it's relatively easy to do a lot of damage in this soviet metal beast, and secondly that if you want to grind credits with tank destroyers, the Scorpion G is really more or less your only real option, leaving everything else far behind in terms of profitability. 
And finally, to close things off, let's have a look how the SPD is did fair in this comparison. I'm guessing most of you will be like. So, by win percentage on top, it's actually Bert's quote unquote little brother, the tier 5 bishop with close to 53% average wins. This is followed by the American tier 6 RNG machine, the M44, with those absolutely disgusting heat shells. And finally, in third spot, we have probably the best high tier artillery in the game, the M53 M55 tier 9 American artillery, still with an almost 51% average wins. Now, profitability wise, artillery seems to make actually rather alright credits as well. And on top spot, once again, we are seeing the bishop at tier 5, now also the second place staying in the family with the FE304, aka Bert the Avenger. And finally, in the third place, we have the French AMX 13 F3, which is a bit of a mystery to me considering how bloody unreliable this thing can be. As for the premium SPGs, there is actually only one in form of the 105 LEFH 18B2, or as Jingles would say, the Le Fe 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 at tier 5. Although living up to its name, it actually has a really impressive win rate at close to 56% average wins, and it even makes credits as well. Oh boy. Alright people, so this was then my little summary of the best tanks right now in World of Tanks, at least in terms of win percentage and profitability. If you are thinking to pick one of these things up, don't forget though that you actually have to enjoy the tank itself and its playstyle as well. Just because on average people do well in them, it doesn't guarantee that you will too. Now tomorrow I will be back with another Funny Moments compilation, focusing on the kings of RNG this time, and over the weekend we will have some rather nice non-commentated gameplays on the channel, featuring a Sherman Firefly going on a tanky rampage, and an Object 268 scoring a metric ton of damage in a very tight tier 10 match. As for me, however, let me already wish you an excellent weekend ahead. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and I look forward to seeing you again in one of the next videos.